Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman, and we haven't looked at a mini PC on the channel in a little while, but I got one in the other day, and uh, we're going to take a look at it. This is the Minix N42C4. It costs $300 and is powered by an Apollo Lake N4200 processor. We're going to put it through our usual barrage of testing and let you know what I think of it in just a second. But I do want to let you know in the interest of full disclosure that I paid for this with my own funds. All the opinions you're about to hear are my own. Nobody is paying for this review and no one has reviewed this content before I uploaded it. So let's get into this and see what it's all about. So let's take a closer look now at the hardware. Uh, it's made out of plastic, as you can see. It does pick up a lot of fingerprints and grease and whatnot, so you'll want to uh, maybe not touch it all that much. Uh, as I mentioned, it does have that N4200 Apollo Lake processor built in. Uh, that is a quad-core chip. We've tested this on a number of other computers already, laptops and mini PCs, so we'll see how this stacks up against those. It has four gigabytes of RAM uh, that it comes with and 32 gigabytes of eMMC storage, which in my opinion is no longer adequate for a Windows PC. Once you get that first update in there, your space goes down to practically nothing and you do have to spend a lot of time managing it. The good news is that this is upgradable and you can see what it looks like inside. We did a teardown on the extras channel. Uh, so you can upgrade the RAM. There's two RAM slots on here. One of them is occupied with that four gigabyte stick. It takes DDR3 RAM. And you can also get more storage into it uh, with an M2 SATA slot that's also in size. And the nice thing is, is that once you pop open the bottom, those ports are accessible to you for upgrading the storage and memory. Uh, so I definitely recommend getting an M2 SATA drive to accompany this purchase. And I also recommend perhaps getting an extra stick of RAM if you want more graphics performance out of this. So what I'm doing in this review is running this with an eight gigabyte configuration where both of those RAM slots are occupied so that we get better graphics performance in some of the games that we test a little bit later. So if you are planning to do some gaming on here, this is not a real gaming machine, but if you want to, uh, I would suggest getting that RAM in there because it will run faster graphically with two sticks of RAM versus one. So definitely get more storage in here and consider uh, getting some RAM again if you are looking to play some games on this. Now on the side, you've got a bunch of ports here, three USB 3.0 ports, full-size ports. Your power button is here. Uh, there is some venting here on the side, and there is a fan inside the computer, but it is not that noisy even under load. I think if you are using this in a home theater environment, you will probably not hear it at all, so that was nice to see, but under load, you will hear it if you're sitting next to it. We'll do some stress testing of the thermals on this a little later in the video. You got a bunch more ports on the back here. Uh, your, your power goes in here. You have another option for power, though, which I'll get to in a second. Gigabit Ethernet. Display port out, HDMI, and then a full service USB Type C port. You can output display through here, so you can have three unique displays going out of this computer. And you can also notice here it's got that little battery icon around its USB icon, which means that you can deliver power through that USB C port too. So, in essence, you could plug in a dock. Uh, with a single cable and power the computer and get video out of it, uh, which I thought was pretty cool. I'll show you how that works in a minute. But there's some gotchas here with all these display outputs on this. So uh, the display port works fine, 4K, 60 hertz, not a problem. HDMI can do 4K, but only at 30 hertz, 30 frames per second. So if you are looking for uh, 60 out of all three ports, you're going to be out of luck. We tested this port and it just only outputs 30 hertz, even with the included HDMI cable that they gave us. So uh, that one's out of the running for 60 hertz at 4K. You can though hook up an HDMI 2.0 to USB-C adapter into here and get 60 hertz out of the USB-C. The problem though is that there's no audio going out over that display adapter on the USB-C port, which is, uh, you know, it's every manufacturer just uh, implements this USB-C stuff in different ways. So if you want audio out, you got to go with the display port or HDMI, but you can get 4K at 60 hertz out of that USB-C. So I'm guessing you could have two 4K 60 hertz displays and maybe a 30 hertz going out the HDMI. You also notice that the audio output here supports analog headphone microphone adapters and whatnot, but also optical, and they give you an adapter in the box to get that optical out. And I know that's an important feature uh, for a lot of home theater enthusiasts. Over here is a little reset thing, and then you also have a Kensington lock for locking it down on a desk. 
And on the bottom here, you can see what it looks like. To get into it, you just pop these uh, little uh, rubber feet off and unscrew everything to get into the computer. So that is the hardware overview and some of the gotchas with its uh, display outputs. But let's hook it up here and see how it works. We're going to do a little mini dock and see if we can power everything with a single input. Okay, so I've got this little mini dock that I got from StarTech a little while back. I've got a review of this on the Extras channel if you want to check it out. Uh, it integrates Ethernet and HDMI and power. Uh, and what I've done here is connected up an Apple power adapter. It's an 87-watt USB-C adapter. But I think you should be fine even with like an Ultrabook uh, power adapter because it only requires about 36 watts max. Uh, so even some of the lower-powered uh, USB-C docks and power adapters should probably work. I also plugged in my uh, Logitech keyboard dongle in here. So let's connect this all up to the back and uh, see what we get here. So I'm just going to pop it into that USB-C port. Uh, we got this dock connected with only a single cable now. So let's see if we can power up the computer and get it to boot. So let's hit the power button here. There we go. The thing has lit up. And let's see if it activates our display now. I have not yet tried this uh, live yet, so this is kind of my first uh, go at it. But let's see if it activates the display and, getting, and get our computer up and running here. But it looks pretty promising so far. Uh, and again, we're going through a single cable. So it's kind of nice to have this USB-C option if you want it. I think it makes more sense on a laptop perhaps, but uh, kind of neat though if you are looking to reduce your amount of cables, you can get that done. Uh, incidentally, one of the things I didn't mention at the outset is that there's also a Visa mount for this. So if you have one of those monitors that integrates the dock into the monitor itself, you can attach this to the back of that monitor and run a single cable into the computer uh, to get its display output and power, but again, no audio on that. So let's take a look now and see how this performs. So let's take a look first at web browsing and video watching. Uh, we've got a 1080p 60 video running here from my YouTube channel. No drop frames, everything seems to be working just fine. Uh, the device does have wireless AC, so if you have a newer router, it will support the faster wireless modes that it supports. So we were able to browse the web pretty nicely on this as well. As you can see, pretty decent page rendering and uh, no issues there. Uh, we also run a web browsing benchmark called the speedometer test, and there we got a score of 42. 2.2. Uh, that puts it right within the margin of error with uh, a couple of laptops we've looked at running with this exact same processor. So it's performing as well as all the other stuff out there, uh, which is running with the same guts that this one has, which is always good to not see anything lower than expectations. So we were pleased with that. It also did very well with Microsoft Word running the newsletter template that we run, which is kind of a desktop publishing example. Uh, you should be able to get some productivity work done on this thing without too many hiccups either. So let's move on now to gaming. And this is certainly not a game machine by any stretch, but you can play some casual games and some older games on it. And again, I do recommend uh, bumping yourself up to that uh, dual channel RAM for the best performance. And the uh, games that you're going to see are running in that dual channel mode. I would expect probably a 20 or 30% reduction in performance with only a single stick of RAM. Uh, we'll begin off here with Rocket League, and we were seeing frame rates around uh, 25 to 30 frames per second at 1080p with all the settings turned down. You could probably do better at 720p if you wanted to, but uh, you can get a decent game of, of Rocket League running on this thing without too many issues and the frame rate was consistent with other uh, laptops with this chipset. We also tested out Minecraft running with the Optifine Performance Enhancer again at uh, 1080p. And there we saw frame rates around anywhere from like 21 all the way up to 81 frames per second. It does kind of vary as to where you're going, but I think you should be able to squeeze out uh, 60 frames per second if you get your settings uh, tweaked just right in Minecraft. And we also like to run some older stuff on these computers. And Half-Life 2 is a great example of a AAA title from uh, a decade ago that is still fun to play and runs very nicely on hardware like this uh, at 1080p with Half-Life, again, with settings turned down. Uh, we were seeing anywhere from 53 to 78 frames per second. So very playable if you want to go back in time a little bit to uh, play some of the games that used to tax the computing hardware from the early 2000s. You can now do it on a very low-cost $300 PC. And on the 3 d Mark CloudGate test, we got a score of 3,171. And stacked up against some other N4200 devices we've looked at, it actually does much better, especially in the graphics department. And that is because this has that dual-channel RAM setup, whereas those other two devices, I believe, did not. 
Uh, so that gives you an example of what an extra stick of RAM can do for you. Again, still won't be a triple A powerhouse, but it is something to think about when uh, purchasing this PC, especially for playing retro games and some other stuff that you might want to use that taxes the uh, graphics hardware. So not bad for what it is, but I think you will have to go beyond its $300 price tag to get in the door with that. And we also tested its thermal performance with the 3D Mark stress test. There we got a score of 90.3%, uh, which is not a passing grade, but it did do a little better than some of the other uh, Apollo Lake devices we've looked at that are in laptop form. So it is able to move air a little more efficiently, apparently. Uh, but you do want to make sure you keep the vents on this thing clear to prevent it from getting too hot. But if it's clear, it looks like it will do a fairly passable job of keeping the performance relatively steady uh, under moderate load. But if you really start pushing it, you will see uh, a little performance drop off as it gets hotter. And we also ran our usual barrage of home theater tests on the device, including the uh, 4K 140 megabits per second HEVC file that we like to throw at all of our test computers. And it was able to play that back just fine. There was a skip frame when it started up, but it was able to maintain a constant frame rate after that. Uh, this generation of Intel hardware can decode those high-end HEVC files in hardware, so you shouldn't have issues playing back uh, high bitrate Blu-ray files and that kind of stuff on here. No issues whatsoever. It was also able to switch into 24p mode for movies that are shot at 24 frames per second, and it was able to pass through DTS HD and Dolby True HD audio uh, through the HDMI port. But remember, you're not going to get that audio pass through on the USB Type C output. Now, I did try to get Ubuntu to boot up on this, like we have tried on many other mini PCs, and this is as far as I got, just a cursor on screen. Uh, we did try a bunch of different things to try to get this thing to boot up alternative operating systems, but it just isn't working at the moment. There might be some tweaks or something that we might be able to make. Maybe there's a BIOS update that might come later that might help this process along, but for now, it does not look like it is friendly to third-party operating systems. So overall, not a bad little mini PC from Minix. They do make a lot of these little Windows computers, and uh, some are better than others. This one is probably on the better side of things, minus that uh, alternative operating system support. Plenty of ports on here. I like the fact that it's got that USB Type-C port on the back. You saw it worked with that uh, little docking station that we connected up to it. So you do have some options for uh, connecting lots of stuff to it for whatever your needs might be. And it's a small enough footprint as well. Uh, we will be looking at more mini PCs in the near future. There are some new ones coming out soon, running with a new generation of uh, these low-end Intel processors that I'm very excited to check out. So lots more to come, but until next time, this is Lon Seidman. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.TV supporters, including Gold Level supporters of the Black Eyed and Blues Music Hour podcast, Chris Allegretta, Gerard Newberg, and Kalyan Kumar. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.